It's Resident Evil Code Veronica. I pressed the wrong button. Should be pressing this one. Resident Evil. So we can hear the voice say that. I don't think that's an especially good Resident Evil. Uh, the voice there. I think, like, you really need a, a real powerful voice to say it. Uh, I just, I feel like the this voice just sounds a bit too relaxed. About it being... Resident... Evil. Nah, no, it's, it's not, it's not working. It's not working. But what is working, well, who is working is Claire. Uh, Steve is, uh, grieving for his dad. We have not seen him yet. Let's put this ink ribbon away. So let's see. <clears throat> what we got with us, we got the gold key, which we could use at the, um, in the palace. But we also have the hemostatic medicine and the eagle plate, which we could use back at the prison. And that's probably what we should do. Remember Rodrigo? Bleeding to death? Back at the prison? Ran out of medicine. We found that medicine a while back, but I'm sure he's doing okay. Look, he's not moving around. He's conserving energy. As far as we know, Claire, Steve, Alfred, Alexia, Rodrigo... As far as we know, I guess these are the only actual living people left on the island. Oh, and uh, of course, don't forget our friend Gulpworm. I mean... I mean, it's technically not a person. You know, he's happy to see us. Alright, we haven't not gone back down to the prison since we left it. Still on fire? Still on fire. And as we return, we got some zombies that are in some different positions now. You know, some time has passed, they're walking around. Don't really have anything to do. Can't go anywhere. Yep, and they repopulated this place again. More zombies just coming out of those graves. Down we go. What are you doing here? Hemostatic medicine. How kind of you. Thanks. Here, let me help you with that. Thanks, but I can take care of myself. Just go. Keep it. It was a gift from my brother, but... Thanks. Here, let me give you this in return. You might need it later on. Now go. Don't worry about me. No, Rodrigo didn't hand Claire a joint. I know what you were thinking. It was the lockpick. We've been looking for a lockpick because we've seen some uh, simple locks. But now we can actually open them. Yeah, we're, we're leaving our lighter here for him since there's no power. It's just all it's, you know, completely dark, so... 
You'd better get out of here while you're still able. Yeah, he's just gonna stay here with his medicine and our lighter. Let's take a look at this. Lockpick. A simple lock can be opened with this. Um, unfortunately, I guess Claire has probably had some practice with it. So, we still don't know what exactly happened to, when the island was attacked. We know the island was attacked. Uh, everyone died. All the power went out. Rodrigo let Claire out of her cell because his opinion- his feeling on the whole thing was, Okay, this base is done. No- no use holding you prisoner anymore. I'm just gonna open this door. You go where you need to go. Um... But we still don't know who attacked the base and why. Alfred thinks Claire did it. He said after she arrived, they were attacked, so clearly she's in on it. But Claire says no, she's not. Okay, well, Rodrigo's welfare was not the only reason we came here. Framing on that zombie in the the frame of the guillotine there artistic All right, so this was the one building we were not able to go into because it's got an in indentation on this blue plate, but We've got a blue plate. Let's put that in there Ah Zombies. Now we know that we saw a journal from one of the prisoners who said that he knows the other prisoners were taken here and he heard the sounds of screaming. So what is happening here? Well, I mean, besides that explosion. Still says prison. Doesn't change the name for this location. But it appears that we're in an infirmary. It appears that he has been anato anatomized. Is that a word? He's not breathing. I mean, this zombie does not really look any different from any other zombie, but he's been anatomized. Bloodstained scalpel is just scattered here. Well, they won't need this first aid spray. A body bag has been left here. Anatomist's note. Well, the anatomist does the anatomizing. And there, there is a demon in my mind. I can't control the fierce impulses that the demon sometimes drives me to act upon. It is a brutal ceremony with the demon next to me. I enjoy watching people agonize in pain, screaming and convulsing repeatedly as they die. But Sir Alfred was kind enough to acknowledge me and has given me the facilities, chemicals, and equipment necessary to study everything. 
I must never betray Sir Alfred's kindness. It is especially critical that no one discovers the sacred place that only he and I know about. I swear, the basement of this medical building will be kept secret. Of course, I keep the key to the sacred place with me at all times. Even if an outsider sees it, they will never be able to tell that it is the key. I must remember that my life ends when I lose Sir Alfred's trust. Okay, so the anatomist is a sadist, likes torturing people, and Alfred's like, good job! That's what I want from my own personal anatomist. Work for me. And so, a wonderful partnership was formed. An elaborate model of the human body. Something seems to be missing. You know, I'm not sure what it is. Something's missing. Well, if we think about it, maybe it'll come to us. Body bags are piled up here. Gasp. Why don't we combo? Well, no, not not those two. Those two. All right, I guess this is the crematorium. A lot of bodies in here that have not been cremated, but are on fire. Looks like we can't observe this. There's a strangely shaped chair. It's kind of hard to see. It does look like there's a chair with like a piece that would go on the head. Also, we have like bloody spikes. Uh, this chains, this chain and manacle setup over here. Like, so it looks like someone was having a real good time and everyone else was having a real bad time. But I guess we can see that this is probably where the screaming people were and why they were screaming. And we get a Duralumin case, but this time, this time we have a lockpick. And this has a simple lock. I will use the lock pick. It's enhancements parts for our gun. It can be modified with this. All right, let's combine. And there we go. It's a burst now. M93R equipped with a stock. Can be adjusted to fire three bullets in succession. So now we have a new thing on here. Auto or manual. Let's leave it on auto for right now. I'll probably turn that off because three round bursts can use up ammo real fast. But we'll leave it on that for right now. What an odd sound. And the body bag's gone. The dead body has disappeared! Where could it have gone? I don't see it anywhere around me. Ah, the anatomist!
So the anatomist is, it comes at you real fast. Seems to be a bit tougher and a bit more resilient than the regular zombies. I mean, he is like a bit more of a character. And he, as we know, more important characters do become stronger monsters. So he's slightly more important. So he becomes a slightly stronger zombie. That's how the, that's how the T-Virus works. And we got his glass eye. An eyeball model that is made of glass. A little dirty on the other side. Need to boil this eye. Like Vigo would do. Alright, what ha have we seen a head that needs an eyeball? We sure have. Alright, we found the entrance to the sacred place. Anatomist said he swore no one would ever find it. Let's walk. Slowly. I'll pick up that green herb on the way back. Cause we've got bats. Let's not disturb the bats. Alright, we got bunches of zombies here in the sacred place. And I feel like I had over a hundred bullets, like, a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, my ammo's going down real fast. I should probably... Hold on. Probably change this back to manual. Alright, so, what do we have in here? Well, we have, um... What was- yeah, what was this device used for? This weird device. Here's like a water wheel? An old water mill? Clearly this is a fun carnival ride over here, where like someone goes into the cage and then like you throw apples at them and like if you hit them they get dunked in the water. It's fun. It's- a lot of people have fun. A lot of people had fun in this room. You can tell. This was just Alfred's happy fun room. Someone was having fun. Oh, and no, we got tools. Strange devices are on display. Like, big wrenches and pliers, covered with blood. I don't think we can actually look at the, uh... Thick curtain has been dropped down. Oh, right. I think this always puzzled me. Can you actually do anything with that? It does give you a close-up of that. I don't remember if you could do anything about it. Well, it's not really what we're here for. Ever further down we go. Stone statue is holding some armor. It's holding a helmet. Stone statue's holding a shield. This stone statue is holding a rusted sword. I'll take that sword. We've taken it. Oh no, gas! And we could try to go out the door, but the door is locked. So we have to push this as quickly as we can. <laughs> Wonderful. All right, so... Just gonna equip that for a sec. All right, we have what appears to be an Iron Maiden with a slot in the front of it. It's made of iron. There is a hole in the chest. That hole looks like it's just the right size for a rusted sword.
And this unlucky fellow was holding a piano roll. Roll paper that's used for an autoplay piano. If you said it, the music on the paper will be played. Dot dot dot. Well, we have seen a player piano back in the palace. Alright, now we can leave the torture room. I mean, the sacred place. The fun room. Don't disturb the bats. Chitter, chitter. The bats say. But since we're on our way out, we can just take off a running. Alright, so that's all of the buildings in the prison now, but there is one other door that we could open up that we haven't opened before. Over here, We've got a box and a door and a well, a, an item box over there. Crate in the way. Let's get over this and then down here. We can push this out of the way. And since we got a box right here, let's stow some items. We got that piano roll. I'm also going to need the gold key for when we go back to the palace. But what's behind this door? And it's a room we've been in before. The room where Steve told us you cannot rely on people. Believe him. He knows. The reason we're coming back here is so we can get to this security box. Please deposit any metallic items you have in the security box. Because we did leave some stuff, like flame rounds, and the, the unique B.O.W. gas rounds, and an F8 spray. Now we can leave the prison behind. So we can put... Actually, I should take this while we're here. We can put these away. The first Duralumin case we picked up. Bow gun powder. Always welcome. Let's get our bowgun arrows. Make more of those, combined with that. And what we should do right now, since we have the lockpick, before we progress the story, probably we should go back to the locations that we saw where it said that something was locked with a simple lock. But we're done with the prison, at this point. So we can say goodbye. Eh, might as well take that green herb while we're here.
Try to needle, try to thread the needle. I did not. All right, back we go. So let's head to the military base first. Oh, I guess we should pick these up. We're not coming back here. Still, now there's too much stuff in my inventory, so... Let's combine them into a mega herb. So one was in this room. Just some handgun ammo. But I mean, you know, might as well get it. While we're here and all. Next, we could go down into the basement. We still can't do anything with the gun upgrade desk in here and the chemical, but there is this. Acid rounds. Let's head to the elevator. Into the diorama room we go, with our two friends, the paintings. One with skin, one without. And over here. And a first aid spray. I think that's all of them. Unless I'm forgetting something. I think it was those three and the two Duralumin cases. I think. Going from memory here. I'm pretty sure that's them. That's how, that's where we can use the lockpick in these areas. Alright. So a little side stuff. Just doing a little cleanup. Now... You don't have to give Rodrigo the medicine, I should mention. You, we could just do that, not do it, not take the lockpick, and just keep the lighter. Is there a reason that we want to do that? Well, I mean, if we 
get the lockpick, then we can open up these little bonus stashes. And that'll help going forward as well. It'll also help uh, perhaps another character later on. But you don't have to do it. Ow. Eh, just yellow caution. All right, so we got two key items going into this place. One is the gold key. And we did encounter a gold door when we were first exploring the, uh, the palace. <clears throat> you know what this game has not had a whole lot of so far? Some good old Resident Evil puzzles. There have been a few. But here's a, here's one that might take a little bit. What have we got? We have paintings all around. They have buttons. You remember the press a, bu a button under the painting puzzle from RE1, right? Gotta figure out the order of the paintings. Message to the new family master. Sir Alfred, congratulations on your succession as master of the Ashford family. I hereby present you with an earthenware vase according to the Ashford family tradition. As you may know, this tradition first began when a butler presented a golden teacup as a commemorative to Veronica. As founder of the Ashford family, her intelligence and beauty are legendary. The second and third masters, Stanley and his son Thomas, were also presented with similar teacups. It was their hope to achieve glory as Veronica did before them. The position of family master then shifted from Sir Thomas to his twin brother, Sir Arthur. It then went to Sir Edward, your grandfather. That was when the Ashford family enjoyed its golden age. It was also Sir Edward's achievement that established the large chemical enterprise, Umbrella Inc. Yes, Alfred did mention that before. His grandfather was a co-founder. However, when Sir Edward passed away and your father, Sir Alexander, succeeded the position, the glorious Ashford family gradually began to sink. I sincerely hope that the Ashford family regains its glory with your guidance, just as this vase continues to shine eternally. Scott Harmon... Butler, Ashford family. So yeah, I mean, restoring the glory of the family name, kind of a big thing among the current Ashfords and and the Butler. They really want the glory to come back, because for some reason, uh, the family sank into disgrace under Sir Alexander. But why is that? What happened with him? It's the same child seen as on the projector film. There's a message written onto the picture. Trace the Ashford legacy. Reveal the true master. There's a button below. I'll push it. The button's flashing. This resets all of the buttons. I'll push it. Okay, so if you mess up the puzzle, you get this alarm, and then you can reset it. A pure white candlestick. Something's written on the base. In memory of Alexander Ashford's succession. This is broken. Alright. Here are the, the, the heads of the Ashford family. And we gotta figure out the order, the lineage. Well, the first one's pretty easy. A beautiful woman is holding a tea set. There's a button below. So if we if we think about the lineage, there was only one woman mentioned, that being Veronica, the uh, the founder of the family, uh, and her beauty and intelligence were legendary, as they say. Uh, so she's the first head of the family. We will push a button. That's number one. Who is next? 
Well, she was given a tea set, and apparently her son was also given a tea set. This person, we, we looked at this painting. This guy's holding a candle. This guy has a plate. We will not push his. This middle-aged man has twins. And there is a tea set. I, well, should I push his button? Well, let's look at other paintings. A man's portrait. There's a vase. That's not a tea set. We will not push his button. What about this man? This guy's got a tea set. Is he the next? Well, no, because something we need to remember is that the next uh, master of the family after Veronica had twins. This man has a tea set and is holding twins. So he is, he is the next master of the family. Okay, twins. The twins have red hair. Here's a red-haired man. He's got a plate. Should I push his button? No. No, I didn't mean to push that button. I pushed a button, not mean to push that one. But the red-haired man over here, it did say that the next master was also given a tea set, and this guy's got red hair and a tea set. I will push his button. So who is his twin? Well, it has to be someone who looks like him. This man looks like him. So Because his twin brother was the next master. I'll push that. Now we have two portraits left. We have the guy with the candlestick. And a guy with an earthenware vase. Well, the next master who received the earthenware vase was the grandfather. Everyone loves the grandfather. The grandfather was one of the co-founders of Umbrella. The Ashford family was in its prime when the grandfather was in charge. So we're going to push his button. There's only one left, and we read up on that stage that Alexander, the father, was given a white candle as his item. No one likes Alexander. Boo! The Ashford family sank into disgrace under him. But why? Well, we don't need to know why. We just need to know that he had a candle. We're going to push his button. And then there's only one left. Alfred's picture. Gasp! We have revealed the true master and the earthenware vase. The true master is Alexia. So I, I guess at this point we've on we only know that uh, that uh, Alfred is in charge of the base, and Alexia is really hot. And Alfred does not want to see does not want people to see how hot Alexia is. We don't really know too much about Alexia herself. Other than both of them were in that home movie where Alfred was pulling the wings off a dragonfly. But her picture was revealed as the true master, owner of the earthenware vase. It's a nice flower design. But what's this? There's something inside. It's a queen ant. That is an ant. With a big ruby in it. Contains a red ruby. And you might remember when we looked at Alexia's music box, there was an impression on the music box that, you know, may have looked like an ant. All right, that's the gold key. The other key item we have here. is the piano roll. So we're going to head up to the casino where the player piano is. Oh, actually, there's a green herb over here, and I could probably use that at this time. Hey, you know what was something pretty cool about this game? It hasn't come up as I've been playing it, but I believe this was the first time in a Resident Evil game that if your inventory was completely full and you found a green herb, 
and you couldn't put it in your inventory, it would say, do you want to use it now? Because the previous games didn't let you do that. Advancements in gameplay. Let's put this piano roll in the piano. The Kingmaker reveals its secret. We got the King Ant. Contains a blue sapphire. All right, we got two ants. The Ashfords kind of have a thing about ants and dragonflies. I'm not really sure what that thing is. Well, we know that the music boxes have those uh, impressions for ants back up in the residence. So we're going to go up there. Let's, uh, let's see. Let's put some stuff away. And that should be fine. Except as we are on our way here. Oh no, many zombies. Otherwise known as an area where it says, hey, are you stocking up on ammo? Maybe you should start using it now. We don't want you to have too much ammo. No bandersnatches. Oh no, there are bandersnatches! It tricks you. No bats, but there are zombies. Starting to run out of bullets, but we got plenty of explosive arrows. Hello. And this hallway is also repopulated. Can't believe Alfred is letting all of these commoner zombies into the palace. This is supposed to be private. Actually, this is the residence, not the palace. But still, it's supposed to be private. Really slacking on the job. Yeah, and we are out of bullets. All right, let's head in here. Put our red ant in here. There's a music 
beatbox plate. I should take that. We took it. This plate is needed for a music box to play. And at one time, Claire would have thought this is strange. But after the RPD, you know, it's... She's not phased. All right, here's Alfred's music box. Let's open that up. <clears throat> Put this in. And that makes his bed roof lower with the secret ladder. Except this one... The entrance is open. The one over Alexia's bed was blocked. What a delightful attic. There is a ladder over here, but ladder above here is sealed. Picture of an ant is drawn on the wall. There is, it appears the keyhole is the mouth part. There's nothing useful. What a nice little uh, play area for a couple of children to spend their time in. We got a silver dragonfly. Not that. This. Uh, what would we? Well, we know what Alfred does with dragonflies. It's a dragonfly object. It's designed so the wings can be detached. Let us detach the wings. We got the. Yeah, they've been detached. Now we have the silver dragonfly, sans wings. Various toys and tools are placed here. Nothing useful. Look at this big torso. Pro possibly a scene from a fairy tale. There seems to be nothing strange about it. This telescope is going to waste. It's not even a window here to look to use it to look out of. All right, back to the ant. Put that dragonfly in the ant's mouth. To activate the carousel. To line up the ladder. To go to the highest static of all. There is a save point. Eh. Well, actually, I don't know how much I have in that box. Maybe I have, like, one. Might as well take this. There's, like, a doll here, but I can't actually look at it. There is something on the floor, though. Bullets? Sure. We'll take bullets. And a newspaper clip. A ten-year-old girl genius graduated at the top of a class from a prestigious university. The International Corporation Umbrella Chemical Inc. offered her the position of head researcher. How odd. A ten-year-old girl? As the, the head researcher at Umbrella Inc.? That sounds like the premise of a wacky anime. But it wasn't wacky at all, was it? I'm gonna push this box over here. Can we look at this? Various gadgets, nothing useful. And up here we find confession letter. 
It's Alfred's confession. Alexia, my sister, is a genius and possesses unmatched beauty. As she is everything to me, I would overcome any obstacle and be willing to risk my life for her. For Alexia, I must revive the glorious Ashfoot family, which fell during the era of my father, Alexander. Together, we will restore our family name. Once that has been achieved, I'll build a palace where only nobles may gather. I cannot allow the unwashed to see my dear Alexia, to whom my life is devoted to. She reigns the world as queen, with I as her servant. That is my dream. Ah, oh, and how sweet it will be. Those accomplishments will be the proof of my love towards Alexia. It is the purpose of my existence. All other people are meaningless, and they shall soon prostrate themselves before Alexia and I, devoted to my beloved Alexia, Alfred Ashford. Wow. Alfred feels all this for his sister, and Chris could not even send Claire an email saying where he was going. Jeez, Chris. Jeez. We found the Air Force proof. We could see the contrasts between, like, the, the brothers and the sisters here. A hex-shaped stone object. A picture of a fighter is carved on it. And it says, Special Air Force from the east side of J... Uh, T? Either J or... J or T... K... B? Man, I'm having trouble seeing that last bit there. From the east side. So we found... We have now found three hexagonal proofs. Army, Navy, and Air Force. There was a place where we, we needed to put three hexagonal objects in. So forget all about this Ashford business. Why don't we head back to the airport and get on that plane? Nothing standing in our way now. Claire Redfield, hold it right there. We meet each other at last. A pity I must say goodbye so soon. I am Alexia Ashford. For the pride of the Ashford family, I will kill you. Wait! What's going on? Steve! A secret door! After her! Are you okay? I'm fine. It's just a scratch. Well, I mean, we can see who the better shot is, I guess. Alright, through the secret door. Looking under that bed. Steve seems to be uneasy. I don't know, Steve. Like, I guess maybe someone could be under the bed. I don't know if you have to keep looking that long. Alexia's dress is abandoned here. That is one quick removal dress. Like, there's like a rip cord on this dress and it comes flying off, apparently. This must be. <laughs> <laughs> What? No! Wait a second. What just happened? So there never was an Alexia after all. You mean... He thinks he's two people? Okay, that's it. Let's get out of here. The self-destruct system has that been That freak! Activated. He's trying to blow us up along All with the entire facility. Come on, we gotta get to that airport. Right. Well, the conclusion that Claire comes to is that there must never have been an Alexia. 
But Claire saw the home movie. It's a blonde hair wig. Stained with blood. And of course, you might not be surprised, the island does have a self-destruct mechanism, because it resident evil. Claire does not have time for this. I guess Alfred must have a remote control on him. Nope. Please, Mr. Snatch. The place is gonna- the entire island's gonna blow up. You might want to leave too. Yeah, Alfred just must have a remote control on him to start this whenever- whenever the mood strikes him. Ow. One- one last shot. Well, if the place is blowing up, what do we need to take with us? Well, we know that we need... Right, Navy proof. And armor. Okay, three proofs. Got them. Right. Let's go. Okay, apparently there were other people on the island who survived. And they're getting out of here. There were other airplanes. They're flying away. So we only have one ride off the island. And it's the plane... That's right. It's the airplane we saw before, but we were not able to access because we did not have the three military proofs. Into the sub. Steve is taking the lead here, because he knows if he wasn't, we probably would just take off without him. <laughs> Steve making sure he gets out of here. Jeez, Steve. Couldn't even kill these zombies for us. Alright, here we are. Finally, we're here with our three hexagons. Air Force, plug in. Navy, plug in. And army, plug in. And now we can use this platform. Apparently it's a control panel for the lift. I will push the switch.
can't take off unless we raise the bridge. Leave that to me. You stay here and make the preparations for takeoff. The Isn't it always something? The bridge is in the way. We gotta move the bridge. But in the plane, we find the control lever. This seems to have been removed from a control panel. Activated. Maybe we should find that control panel. All right. We'll be back. Just got to raise that bridge. It'll take a sec. No problem. Look, a timer has not even started yet. Alfred jumped the gun on this. Pressing the first button that says that the place will explode, but hasn't actually hit the timer. So, like, no one's going to get taken by surprise by this. So here's the bridge. We need see so it's blocking the plane. We need to find a way to lift this up. So here's a door, but we never actually found the key for this. K402. How odd. We've been in this room before. This is where the crane puzzle was. And we tried going out this door before, but there was a control panel with no lever. Well, look who's back with a lever. We will raise the lever. We raised the bridge, except there's one problem. We took the bridge to get here. How do we get back? We're gonna have to find another way back. The device controls the bridge's oil pressure. Well, that's It's good that the pre oil pressure is working. And we don't have to do a puzzle to solve the oil pressure. Hey, we found the airport key. Just happened to be here, among these dead bodies. It's a key for the motor-driven shutter. The word K402 is written on the tag. Sure does say that. Alright, so that key to that one door, we found it up here. Which is good, because otherwise Claire would not have, would not have a way of getting back. Now, in front of the military base, there's been an elevator that we have not been able to use for the entire game. Because look at this. Someone just jammed boxes in the door down here. No wonder we can't use it. This doesn't even seem like something that happened due to the attack on the base. Someone was just sloppy. Alright, doors down. And let's take some items. Sure giving us a few things right now. A few health items and some ammo? And a box and a save point? You know, it probably doesn't mean anything. 
But why don't we take our grenade launcher with us? Just in case. Five minutes until detonation. Right, so earlier we read about that Hunk and his team delivered a giant frozen capsule. Alfred was just waiting for the right time to use it. Well, the tyrant's fierce, but we do have this. All right, I'm out of those. There we go. All right, so now we've made a loop. We've gone all the way around. We're back at the palace. So now we can take the submarine to get back to the airport. That water is still very cool. I bet the tyrant would have been impressed by the water. Would have splashed around in it, maybe. Nothing in our way from getting back to that plane. The bridge is up. And we are clear for takeoff. And I'm I'm sure Steve knows how to fly a plane. This is Resident Evil. People people can just do that when they need to do it. Claire, 
I'm sorry. I know I caused a lot of trouble for you. No, it's okay. It was hard for both of us. Well, I really hope you find your brother. I... I know what it's like to be alone. Oh, Steve. <clears throat> so, where should we go now? I can take you anywhere you want to go, Claire. <laughs> I hear Hawaii is nice this time of year. You got it! <laughs> <laughs> Not strange. Just the the door in the back of the plane is open. You know, it'll probably be fine. But just for safety's sake, I'll save a game. This is uh so this is the boss fight that is sort of infamous uh when it comes to this game. And a lot of people will say that they kind of stopped playing the game here. For one reason that if you don't have enough ammo, it's hard. It's not impossible to do the fight, because the way they do it, you can't actually do it with no ammo. But it's hard. And it's a lot easier if you have ammo, which and we have quite a bit. We're kind of we're kind of bursting with ammo over here, and this is where we're going to use the BOW rounds. I mentioned previously that uh, the BOW rounds, what they do is when you shoot them, everything in the room with you takes 50% damage. Uh, so very useful, especially for a big boss fight like this one. And we have a healing item. Let's just take a couple more herbs. And uh, let's load this. And in we go. All right, the tyrant somehow got on board at, before we got out, I guess. However, this computer tells us that the catapult is ready. Now, if you have no ammo, you can do damage to him with the catapult. And in fact, even when you take all of his health away, you can only kill him with the catapult. Here is what the catapult does. Launch it? Yes. He does not like that. He just sends it right back. So that does some damage to him. And if he has no health left, that's going to be the finishing blow. Okay, so the reason... Okay, first of all, I don't want to get too far to the back of the plane, because he can knock you out of the back of the plane. Which... I shouldn't... Oh, comboed me. Now he's going out for the big swing. How much damage did that do? 
I'm an orange caution. All right. So, we don't have much room to maneuver. And he can be fast. Catapult's ready. It takes a few- it takes a minute for that to recharge. Now he's getting me in the corner, which I don't want to be in the corner. That is a bad place to be. I'm in red. All right, let's use this. All right, how's he doing? Okay, yeah. Now he's staggering, he's moving slowly, and he's bleeding. So now, he has no health left. And if we can keep our distance away from him... Okay, catapult's ready. And that's it for the Tyrant. He is out of here. So that can be a, a pretty hard fight because of, again, you don't have much room to maneuver around. He can move pretty fast. And uh, if you don't have much ammo, it'll take longer. But you do, if, you can stay, if you can stay alive, you can catapult him to death. I think if you don't shoot him, it takes five or six catapults to get him out of here. Also... It's kind of hard to see, and Claire doesn't acknowledge it. There's a orange spot there. It's a mouse. It's a mouse stowaway. Still weighing on the plane. What was wrong? Oh, nothing. Just a giant cockroach that had to be stepped on. What's happening? I don't know. The plane just changed direction on its own. It's flying in autopilot mode. I can't switch over to manual control. My apologies. But I cannot let you escape now. <laughs> Alfred! Cross-dressing freak! Two point one seven degrees. That's the Antarctic. We're over the Antarctic. What? Hey, those are the seaplanes that left the island right before us. Then that must mean this place belongs to Umbrella. And we've reached the end of disc one. Ari, Code Veronica, throwing you a curveball, giving you the self-destruct sequence. But it's not the end of the game, it's only the end of disc one. 
And it turns out, you know, I'm I'm sure the autopilot was responsible for the crash. I'm just going to say that that Steve was. That uh, as they were landing, control went back to Steve and he's responsible for crashing the plane cuz I prefer it that way. So, we are going to save a game. I'm glad that this game uh, does that. Most games I had a disc change would have you save it at the disc change. Occasionally you'd find a game that doesn't do that. It's it's very good that that they do. Okay, that this one does. Press open to open that disc door. Replace disc one with disc two and close the disc door. And as we continue on, take a little break right now, but as we continue on with Code Veronica, we're going to go to disc two. And Claire and Steve will find themselves in a brand new location uh, to deal. I mean, the island had the T-virus problem, had the zombies. That's not going to be a problem in the, in the Antarctic base. It's a completely different location. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, I do also like how after not after seeing the in-game graphics for so long, it looks so weird when it goes back to the pre-rendered graphics. Like I don't know, Claire and Steve in the high the high detail pre-rendered graphics. Like th they look so weird. They don't. They look worse, I think, than the in-game graphics. They're much more detailed, but they look... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't like looking at them. So, status. Rockford Island exploded. Claire, Steve, Alfred got out. What happened to Rodrigo? We don't know. Steve, uh, almost, a stat almost achieving sex offender status, backed off at the last second. He was almost there. Um, but, I mean, hey, it's only disc one. <laughs> There's so many possibilities for disc two. Also, um, I mean, what, you know, just, uh, just to clarify, uh, a lot of people misinterpret, uh, one of Claire's lines there, uh, this thinking she says cross-dressing freak. No, no, that's a common misinterpretation. She's actually saying cross-dressing fleek. And, and according to dictionary.com, the definition of fleek is... Ahem. Flawlessly styled, groomed, etc. Looking great. Which, I w for all of Alfred's faults, I would say he is impeccably groomed. Now, so it, Claire is just really ahead of the curve on slang. Uh, considering that this takes place in 98. Ahead of the curve. So, uh, Claire and Steve landing in Antarctica. Alfred on the way. They're going to see what, what waits for them. In the coldness. So we continue on with Code Veronica. <laughs> 